Are you recording at this point? Oh, there we go. Got it now. Okay, there you go. There okay, you go. Hi, Paul. Good morning. Hi. Great to see you. <laughs> Great to see you too. Thank you for for uh, for this opportunity, Paul. Um, it's really an honor to talk to you. Um, I just want oh, to ask. So kind you, of you. It's uh, it's actually my 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 privilege. I wish I was on the beach on your back. Right <laughs> oh, you're welcome to be here in Palawan too. You know, it's a wonderful. It's also a very wonderful province here in Philippines, in nature. Yes, well, the Philippines is a yeah, is a country, a very special place, as you know. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, I'm thrilled to be taking time with you. <laughs> yes. So, anyway, Paul, um, you know what? I know that, of course, you're well known already. But for those who don't know you yet, and you know, if we just met in an airplane, and um, I just how would you how would you introduce Paul? How would you introduce him? Oh, yourself? that's a great question. I've never been asked the question that way. Um, <laughs> well, funnily enough, uh, funnily enough, I was uh, uh, I was asked exactly that same question yesterday. To well, not they didn't mention airplanes, but because I'm beginning to lose track of what an airplane is. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> if you if you contrast my my life in uh, 2019, I think I did something close to 600,000 kilometers in the air, traveling around the world, speaking. And then, of course, on March the 13th, actually March the 12th, I was in Melbourne, and fortunately, I was able to get the last flight out to Singapore, uh, which is where I am now. But um, and that's where home is. But uh, all of that time since then, no flight. So to get back to what I do, the way I like to describe it, uh, Christine, is uh, is hopefully pretty simple. And, and it's this, is that I get up every morning to help business owners and their teams create impacts in their business and on our world mm. that they never could have imagined. Mm. And that's what I do every day. <laughs> so it's really cool. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, may I ask you, um, how did it start, Paul? Um, hmm. How did you start with V1G1? Well, I mean, I started way before you were born, of course. But but uh, <laughs> let's 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 bring it let's bring it back to uh, V1G1. And uh, at that time, uh, that was two thousand seven. And I, uh, if we go back a little bit before that to two thousand, uh, then. Um, I uh, was running events right around the world. We were very privileged to be working with 23,000 uh, small to medium scale businesses and, and, and helping them grow. And then I sold all of that in the year 2000 um, and went to live in France actually for, for uh, three months of the year and then three months in Australia. But because my, my then uh, uh, partner wanted uh, uh, thought that it was about time I stopped doing what I what I do, and you probably can get that it was very difficult for me to do that. Right, I'm not uh. the sort of person who can you know, go sit and, and just you know <laughs> contemplate my navel. Uh, so then I started, and I was under all sorts of legal things that because I'd sold stuff that I couldn't do this, couldn't be that. So then in the year 2003, I, I started speaking again, and that was just incredible again. And then come 2007. Um, I'm actually in Bali doing an event in Bali and in that event was somebody that I was at that time I had just started mentoring mm -hmm. and her name is Masami and Masami Sato and uh, as a side thing from the or part of the event actually we were in this room together this relatively large room and it was a mentoring session, one-on-one, -on -one, that I was doing with her. And as you would know, Christine, that when you're mentoring someone, it's usually you, the mentor, mm -hmm. that asks the questions of the mentee, right? Mm -hmm. And she, she came in and she was looking as if she had been somewhere. Now, by that, I don't mean that she'd been spending time in nightclubs or whatever, because she doesn't do that. But she, it was very clear yeah. she, she had been spending a lot of time thinking about something. It was just very, very clear. And so she said to me, uh, Paul, is it okay, in this lovely Japanese accent, is it okay if we do our session differently today? And I uh -huh. said, sure, what, what do you have in mind? And she said, well, I would like to ask you a question. I said, fine, okay, go away, go ahead. 
And she said, well, it's not so much a question, it's more of a possibility. She said, I want you to imagine a world where every time business is done, something great happens in our world. Uh, and I, I, at the time, I, I guess most people would have called me an Aussie bloke, if that translates. And, and, and I said, <laughs> I said, you know, in other words, not very deep, you know, but, and, and I said, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And, and she said, um, I, I don't think you get it uh, at this, this point. And I said, well, help me with that. And she said, well, in my head, I've called it buy one, give one. And I said, okay, so how does that work? And she said, well, I want you to imagine that you're, you're, you're going down to a store uh -huh. uh, to buy, for example, a plasma TV, right? Something like yes. that. And, and I said, woo, 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 stop. If I go to a store to buy a plasma TV, did you call it buy one? They're not going to give me another TV. That's like crazy. And she said, no, 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 no. She said, you misunderstand. She said, you go to that store to buy that TV because you want a bigger or a better vision. That's why you're there. So she said, how would it be if when you did that, someone who could not see got the gift of sight? Wow. Uh, I know, exactly. No, but I mean, oh, oh, oh. There it was like you know, a huge hit kind of thing. And at the time I was uh, surrounded by books and, 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 and she said, or uh, imagine where an author sells a book and a tree gets planted. And I also had a cup of coffee in, in my hand as well. And she said, or imagine every time a cup of coffee is, is, is sold, a child gets access to pure life-changing or life-saving water. And I said, oh, Masami, that is the best idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Can I be your mentor for the rest of your life? <laughs> I dealt with wow, that. that's amazing. And eventually, yeah, and eventually she, she said yes to that. She didn't say yes. It took her 24 hours to think about that. And she produced a lovely movie for me, which illustrated it. And, and I think all of us, Christine, like even now, right? All of us, when you, when you think about it, where we are right now is a product of or result of all of the reactions and choices that mm. we've made at different moments of our life, if, if that mm. makes sense, right? Yes, it does. And, and so way, I'm sure it does, way back in... 2007 there was that moment there was that choice and I, I i seriously don't think i would be here had i not made that choice uh, and now now uh, you know we don't talk about buy one give one anymore we talk about b1 g1 because now b1 g1 is it, it's really historic actually it's it's it, so many businesses i think 3000 more or more businesses now have done something quite distinct, which has never been done before, which is where they've embedded very simple giving right into the heart of their operation. So for example, just whilst you and I are here on Zoom, 11 kids are getting access to game-changing education just because we're mm. here on Zoom. Uh, so people around the world do things like every time we send an email, something great happens. Every time, oh. you know, it's and if you can imagine, it's all these very tiny things. Um, and as of today, we're very close to, you know, anybody listening to us now should, should never, ever doubt that it is, it is small things that collectively make huge difference. And so today we're very close to 248 million now, let me say that another way, oh. nearly a quarter of a billion wow. <laughs> giving impacts around the world. So again, from that simple moment way back in 2007, oh. amazing things have uh, happened. Yeah. So there that's you go. That's amazing. the short story. Wow. That's really, <laughs> wow. That's so moving. It's so inspiring. Well, you know, when you were sharing that story to me, I realized a lot of things is about 
imagination and the heart. You know. Yes, it is. We need the heart space leaders like you to move, move forward. You know, moving forward, heart space leaders like you is the one that will change the world to a better place. Really. And, yeah, I know. It's interesting. Thank you. Thank you for that compliment. I, I, I think it, it, it's probably always was there. Otherwise, you, you, you know, you don't see it. But um, it takes uh, frequently. It takes someone or something to get us okay. to realize a lot of things. And, and, and by the way, just in that sense, and, and Christine, I don't wish to minimize in any way the impact of the pandemic and uh, you know the quote unquote negative things that have happened to so many people but um, there's some amazing the, the pandemic in my view has accelerated where we were going anyway oh. right and I, so i think i think for example um, you know people like you have always realized that we are one, we, we are connected. I mean, yes. <laughs> we are connected, right? What, what I do to you, I do to me and, you know, vice versa. Uh. And, and you could not have been on this planet in the last 18 months to understand that that's absolutely true, that we really are connected. And so what I, what I see as a result of that is that we are beginning to understand things that we was, you know, we were sort of, it was accelerated. We were starting to understand it way back in, I think, 2008, probably, when, you know, there was this global financial crisis. You may remember that, where, um, you know, people were running, do you know, people were running seminars at that time with the subtitle, Greed is Good. I mean, it's like, mm. come on, that, that was what was happening, right? Mm. And, and then we discovered that that didn't work too well. Right. So uh -huh. then we went in search of something else and 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 you know the whole sort of purpose movement was there. And then as I said, I think that's accelerated rapidly. And so now I think many, many uh, of us understand that uh, it's categorically not about us as individuals. We've we've moved from it being about me to it being about we. Oh, we we I love move that. We've moved from understanding that it's not about the inputs, it's about the outcomes that we're, we're able to produce. It's, 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 it's no longer about value, although value is really, really important, uh -huh. but it's actually now about values. Uh -huh. it's, it's about uh -huh. what we... So does, does that make sense? It does a lot. And one of the things... Yeah, one of the things that, 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 that you know, I, I love the power of, of words um, mm. and particularly when you alliterate words. And so one of the things I think that we now are seeing very clearly, very clearly, is that if, if you just care to look, right, we are seeing, uh, this is perhaps an oversimplification, but hopefully uh, people will get it. And that is that if you look at companies, what, what you see are, are two different types. You see what I call standard companies, and then you see what I call stand out companies. Uh -huh. And the distinction is, so the question is, let's imagine that, well, obviously the stand out companies kind of do better than standard. And so the interesting question is, well, like, how do you become, how do you move from standard to stand out? And the answer to that, I'm certain now, is that you move from standard to stand out because you stand for, you stand for something. And that something that you stand for is bigger than yourself. Wow. So, right, so, so does that make sense? So stand up, stand up because you stand for, right? So, <laughs> it so um, does. Well, what do you yeah. stand for? What do you stand for? Oh, that, that's that, that, that's a brilliant question. Again, my my. Well, let me explain that this way. I was uh, I was on a run. I try to. One of the benefits of the pandemic is that I run every day now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean. 
So I used to say, so I've lost, I've lost 14 kilograms. And, and someone said, no, you shouldn't say you've lost it. You should say you've released it to the atmosphere. Oh. So there you go. I've released 14 kilograms to the atmosphere. Um, and I was on a run the other day, uh, actually about three months ago. And I, I was thinking about, to, to answer your question, I was thinking about standard to stand out because you stand for. I was thinking about that. Which also means you stand up, right? You 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 literally take a stand, and and then, and I'm not sure of the reason why. I then started thinking about the word impact, and I realized that another way of expressing all of that was that you become impact driven. So let me let me give you a very very simple example. And, and by the way, what I stand for is. Helping create, helping people create more impacts in their business oh. and in our world than they possibly could ever imagine. Right. So, and this whole idea of being impact driven is is really uh, concentric, if that's the word, with standard to stand out because you stand for. So, and let me let me just imagine this. Imagine a situation which perhaps some of us have not been in for a while where we've been to a networking meeting as a, for example, right? Uh, and well, it actually could happen virtually, but let's talk about this one as if it happened physically. Okay. And so you've probably been to these meetings where you, you well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it this way. You're much more gracious than this, but sometimes, you know, you're just there and, and you're wandering around and you go, oh, I think I might like to meet that person over there. So you go over and and you, you introduce yourself to that person. Well, maybe you just say, oh, hello, nice to see you. And could I just ask, what is it that you do? Let's uh -huh. just imagine, just, just to have fun with this for a minute and not to denigrate any profession or whatever, but just to have fun with it. Um, then let's imagine the person says, oh, well, I'm, I'm an accountant, right? And what many people do in a circumstance like that, they say, oh, I was actually just on the way to the toilet, you know, <laughs> and of course they they never come back because their mind's gone oh you know it's going to be a boring conversation which you know is probably not true but that's the kind of thing we have with it so imagine that con that that uh connection another way so imagine you go and the person you say oh hello can i just ask what it is you do and the person says oh well i'm an impact driven accountant uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious yeah. that you're going to say, oh, really? What, what's that? Uh -huh. And suppose the person then says, well, I've realized that my value, the wealth, if you like, that I create is a direct byproduct of the wealth and the value that I create for the people that I'm privileged to serve. Uh, and that's why we do incredible things with our clients. And we go, oh my goodness, right? So straight away you're into another conversation. Amazing. And I love that. Does that make sense? It does a lot. Of me. You know, it, it's so resonating with me. So right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Amazing, that amazing good. insight. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, Actually, Paul, I'm very inspired with, with your story, with your journey, you know. And um, I would like to ask you if, for instance, you're, you're in front of these companies right now, like yeah, these yeah. people or representation, um, yeah. what would you say to them? So uh, what, would you, what would you like a message to them, especially those who are, you know, starting or those who are there already? and having that kind of different, you know, mindset still. Well, if you, if you, great question, great question. And, and I guess it's hard to sort of go whack, you know, like, like that. But if you just follow that progression yes. that we were talking about, remember we, we talked about from me to we, me to we talked me. about from yes. value to values. Yes. Um, the, the uh, and so on. And, and we could also talk about, it's from get to give. We could also talk about it's from uh, what to why. You know, what you do is largely irrelevant these days. Why you do it is so much more important. And, you know, thanks to my friend Simon, as in Simon Sinek, we, we sort of understand that a little more now. But if you take that to a logical 
sort of a logical uh, place, then you get that, and this is really interesting, you get that that impact drives income. That that's that's where you where you get to. And you then understand that purpose powers profit. Now, when when you get to that particular level, people go, Oh, are you are you saying that you know I shouldn't make a profit? Of course not, of course not, of course you should. But the question is, why are you doing that? Why? And the why yeah. is, is, is critically important. And what we start to see now, as we said before, is those companies that have a why. See, your, your reason for being should, should, should not be about self. I mean, it's uh, as simple as that. So if you said, well, I'm here to create the biggest, you know, accounting firm or the biggest this <laughs> in this place, I'm sorry, that, that doesn't cut it. That really doesn't cut it. Uh, but but if you if you say things like well I'm here to make a huge difference to the people on the team and then as a result of that a difference a very positive difference to people that we serve I'll talk more about that one in, in a moment and then right. as a result of that a really positive difference and you'd obviously be very specific about it in our world in fact there's a there's a really lovely book and there's lots of lovely books. But this one is really interesting. And can I, can I mention the name of the book? Yes. Even though I, yes, I didn't like it. Okay, so it's, it's a book that's called Cult. And I need to spell that, C-U-L-T. Because some people uh -huh. think I said cult, and I didn't. I said cult. And the next word is status, cult status. Uh -huh. It's written by an Australian guy. He's a first-time author. Um, and his name is Tim Duggan, D-U-G-G-A-N. And what I love about his, well, there's lots of things that I love about his book, but one of them is that when we think about, uh, hopefully this is of, of tremendous value for the people. By the way, thank you for joining us, those of you watching this. Yes, uh, thank tremendous you. Tremendous value for you. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, sa he says it this way. He says, you know, when we think about the companies that we most admire, and, and you know, through writers like Jim Collins, you know, good to be great, and all those sorts of things, so what we need to understand without denigrating any of that is that most of those companies were formed a long time ago. So if you oh. think, say, for example, of Apple, you know, Apple was created in, in 1976. And so, yes. and the, the circumstances then were quite different than they are now. And so maybe we need, you know, a new way of thinking about how we build companies. And then in the book, right, having started with that, in the book, and we're not going to go through all seven of them. In fact, we're only going to mention one. But he gives seven, seven things, seven steps to doing that. And most interestingly, his first step is, is these are exactly the words he uses, is define your impact. Define your impact. Define now, your impact. That, mm. Yeah. Now, let me explain what's so important about that. Um, many people, for, for, example, for example, in Australia, have just gone through, you know, the end of a financial year and they're thinking about the new financial year and, and you know, they're doing their plans. And typically what we do as organizations mm -hmm. is we think, okay, so what's the, what's the revenue going to be at the end of the year? You know, what do we want that to be? What do we want the profit to be? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the smart people amongst us don't do it year by year. We, we have 10-year things, and then oh. we bring that back to three-year, then we bring it back to two, then we bring it back to one, right, typically. And then, you know, you bring it back to four-month uh, uh, sprints. Uh -huh. and, and typically what we say is, let's, let's do it for a year. <clears throat> typically what we say is, okay, this year we're going to make X dollars, right? That's, and that becomes how we decide. Uh -huh. What Tim says, and, and we didn't work together on this. It was one of those moments where you pick up the book and you go, oh my gosh, you know, this is really... <laughs> what, what Tim says is this. He says, why not define your company in terms of the lives that you impact? Why oh. not do that? And so imagine, you know, your team members. I mean, are your team members going to get, you know, really excited about the fact that you just hit, you know, half a million dollars? Probably for all of you know three seconds, but are they going to be much more connected to you if 
if they know that you hit that goal of positively impacting, you know, 300 lives or whatever it was that, does that make sense? Yes, and, it's so a lot. It does a lot, makes yeah. sense to me. The yeah. energy. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a different way of thinking. And the good news is, the good news is, I mean, people have been thinking about it for a fair while now. And the good news is there's now, you know, really, really solid, I mean, as in solid, uh, research that, that says, yeah, purpose does power profit. It really does. Uh, it, uh, that um, impact uh, powers income and so on. So the good news is that we are now surrounded by infrastructures and Symphony 7 is a great example of one of those infrastructures uh -huh. where we can come together Yes. share similar values and as mm -hmm. a result you know multiply the impact of everybody and so you know that's that's one of the reasons why you know what you're doing is really good stuff <laughs> oh, thank you thank you yes i can really resonate with what you're saying because i feel right now there's a shift happening you know this pandemic oh, has caused uh, uh you know for us to really wake up to wake up as a collective and uh really, I, I think so mm -hmm. yes. to yeah i think so mm -hmm. like that that's why uh what you are saying paul is so relevant right now to everybody actually right mm. now in this planet in this planet the whole wide world <laughs> like well you're you're, you're you're to hear yeah you're and, and you know the other thing there's another interesting thing can i can i explain something else that Yes, has please, been go ahead, happening. Is, yeah. just go with your flow. Because no, well, th this was a real surprise to me, I have to say. Um, and you know how, I'm sure you've experienced this be because of all the great things you've been doing. And by the way, we should be, everybody, we should be talking about the great things that Christine's been doing, but, but maybe that's going to be another time. But um, <laughs> you, remember I, you remember I mentioned this whole thing about, choices and moments and you know uh -huh. how you get these moments right yes so i i had a moment uh where i was so and it, it happened because someone someone came to me and they they basically said i'm i'm lost you know i'm i'm i i i can't figure out why i'm here it's you know one of those really unpleasant sort of circumstances that people would be in and I thought about how people would traditionally think about that. Uh -huh. And so typically, I think people would say things like, well, what you need to do, you know, there's this, what you need to do is to go deep inside you know, <laughs> and, and find out what's going on. Now, you know, there, there's, there's probably some truth in that. I'm, 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 in fact, I'm sure there's lots of truth in that. But, but for me, it's easier to, to think of going outside, right? And just, just having a look uh, you know, at, at what's going on so that you can pick something that is bigger, <coughs> excuse me, bigger than you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the interesting thing is that when you pick something that's bigger than you, I just, I mean, let me give you a, like a sample. Well, yeah. Let me give you a very simple moment to moment example. Here is someone, uh, it happens to be a woman. It happens that she's relatively frail <clears throat> and, <coughs> excuse me, and she's, she's trying to get across the road. Uh -huh. Most all of us are going to say, oh, well, let me, help you across the road you're not thinking about you at this point uh -huh. you're thinking about that other person right that's what you're thinking about and so if you if you can scale that whole thing i mean i i try to scale that every day uh -huh. like i'm very fortunate to be here in singapore and one of the beautiful things about singapore is that it has is no need for a car in singapore you, oh yeah you it's want, beautiful you, the unless, transportation unless you, there <laughs> isn't it amazing yes. unless, unless you want you know like a status symbol right but but uh, but but anyway so i happen to be very fortunate and the condo that i live in is right outside there's a bus stop uh -huh. and it's very convenient. as you know the buses yeah 
the bus is there and people in all parts of the world say, no, Paul, you're making this up. I'm not making it up. Every two minutes, there's a bus. There's never a moment in the day when there's not a bus there. Right? Yeah. And so one of the things I started doing at the beginning of the pandemic was recognizing the role of gratitude in everything and recognizing, mm. uh, you know, there were the essential workers. And I'm not talking about the, the, the amazing people at hospitals. Now. I'm talking about the bus driver. Yeah. You know, who, right puts himself literally in the front line and and so so i started actually i'd started this a fair while ago but it became even more apparent during the pandemic so i get on the bus and i've got my got my mask on and i've got my you know my little card that goes beep when you know and so i hold my card there beep and then i would look deliberately at the driver and in singapore it could be male or female and so i would look and just get that connection and then i'd say Thank you for stopping. And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, and I, I like to think that when they when they got home, they would say, you know, their spouse would say, Well, how was your day? And they'd say, Oh, it was great. In fact, like the bus stop number 172, this weird guy got on and said, Thank you for stopping. You know, how about that? <laughs> but, but I think that's that's a very small <sighs> example of how if we if we get off ourselves uh, onto other things, then the reality is we feel better. I, I, I like to put it this way, that every single one of us listening or watching right now, it, there's a very simple truth about, I, I think, I think about, I suspect, strongly suspect about all of us. And, and the truth is this, every single one of us is at our best when we're giving now uh, i don't mean when we're when we're giving money i don't, don't mean that i just mean when we're giving right uh, and and you it's very challenging to do that if uh, you're just going through thinking about you i mean you you can't do that and i, I like what you know one of the great things about being a a, 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 TED, a tedx speaker and i've been very privileged to do that four times now uh, and i, I remember I remember after my my first one, I, I when you when you do that, you get to meet other TED speakers, right? Yes. And so I got to I got to meet Brene Brown, whom I'm sure many of us oh. would, would at least follow, um, you know, and her uh, her Netflix stuff and all of that. And she is she she's amazing. She is seriously, she is what we would call a hoot. You know, she's like she's <laughs> really really funny. Um, but I loved her first talk, um, uh, which is all about vulnerability. Uh, and there's a moment about six minutes into that talk where, where you know, and it's been really fun up to this point. And then and she sort of slows it down in, in like a heartbeat. And she talks about some of her work at the University of uh, Texas there in Houston. And, and she says, um, one of the things that she's been studying is the accelerated, sadly, the accelerated rate at which teenage kids, particularly boys, she said at that point, have been saying, that's it, you know, end. I'm, I, I'm, I'm just not going to be here anymore. Oh. And, and she, yeah, exactly. And, and then she pauses and then, then she says, I mean, and that's still true, right? And, and then she says this, she said, she says, what we need is to remember this, that connection is why we're here. Connection gives us meaning and purpose. Right? Oh. Now, what's interesting is if okay. you're not, so if you follow that through, right? if you follow that through, then if we're disconnected, there is no meaning and purpose. But when we are yeah. connected, meaning we are thinking outside ourselves, then we become connected right, uh, to something. Yes. And that, I think, is our natural state. And oh. in that natural state, we become giving anyway. So it's now a lot of that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not a trained psych or anything like that, but it, but you can't help going through and, and you know, taking time to be 
curious and trying trying to figure out why is that happening. By the way, talking being curious. Um, <laughs> someone, yes. Someone yes. people frequently say to me, they say, because they they know my age, right? And they and they say, Paul, isn't it isn't it about time you stopped? You know, you you <laughs> you you took a rest and everything else. And I love what Zig Ziglar, you'd remember Zig, right? What Zig oh, Ziglar yes. said mm -hmm. years ago. And Zig, who's sadly no longer with us, but but uh, Zig Zig said, I think when he was 83, someone said to him, so so Zig, why don't you slow down? And, mm -hmm. and Zig said, Zig said, well, I've got less time left than you, so actually I just speed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so funny, <laughs> isn't it? Hmm. And and I think the 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 clue to that is to again to think outside of ourselves and to be, you know, continually curious. For me, I'm not saying this is true for everybody, but to to be seriously curious about uh. what's going on around us and try and see these threads uh, that are there. And uh. as a result, you know, you have the privilege of connecting, you know, with you this morning, right? That's yes. a really me too. Okay. I have the privilege of connecting with the wonderful Paul, who is yes, an amazing <laughs> being right now in this space time. So amazing, amazing. Like I, I my last question for you actually is: what's, what's the best advice that you are living with right now? And mm. actually, that question before I even asked that, I already got a lot from from the inspiring messages and stories that you shared to us. Well, thank you. I think there's, you know, one of the things that is around, or one of the things that amazes me is that when you are continually curious, you, you just, you know, you just see more things. I mean, a simple example, you know, this the little book that someone recommended. Right? Oh, Clarity. The Little Book of Clarity, right, by a guy called yes. Jamie Smart. And, uh, you know, he, 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 put, he says this. He says, clarity equals capacity minus contamination. And oh. to him, contamination is all the rubbish that's going around in, uh, in our head, which we can choose to get rid of. So that I, that's, you know, that's a, like an important thing to work at. But I think wow. one of the things that... that uh, and, and you know there there are so many things that that drive you at, at different moments. Like I remember uh, Neil Donald Walsh, with, with whom I, I did some. Oh, know, I like I love him. Mm. He's great. He's great. It's I amazing. spent a fair bit of time with him, and I remember he he said, you know, he said, you you got to understand that leaders do not create followers he said the best leaders you judge the leaders by the number of leaders they create not oh. the number of followers they create um, uh. but then and so one thing i think that is uh, actually on my desk over here is this it says when your vision becomes more powerful than your memory that's it. Let's just think about this for a start. For, oh. Let's go through slowly, slowly. When your vision becomes more powerful than your memory, your future becomes more powerful than your past. And oh. and that isn't that that's you know the key, I think, to to which 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 leads back to that whole transition from you know standard to stand out because you stand for um so i'm i'm hopeful that uh, people listening to us have figured out you know maybe there are one or two things in there that might sort of sit with them in these times that we've never been in before I mean, we're, we, you know, to a large extent, we're sort of making it up as, as we go along. But I think that if we make it up, as in based on some really, really solid principles, rather than our, our necessarily our reaction to things at that moment, but some really solid principles, particularly underpinned by, it's no longer about me. It's about we. It's about when we. we yeah, when we get that, then it, it gets us into that mindset, 
which is um, you know, which is all, all about um, being connected, having meaning and purpose, and 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 just coming together to 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 do you know great things on our planet. And fortunately, you know, there are lots of things around right now that that are automatically. Uh, bigger than ourselves you know if you look at the global goals those are for example those those 17 things that we mm -hmm. have to have to meet by 2030 otherwise we're history right i mean seriously we're history um, yes. and you, you you can't implement those unless you're outwardly thinking so i think there's all sorts of props around now that are giving us the ability to do these these kind of fascinating things and to live lives that are fuller than we ever could have imagined that's amazing thank you thank you so much for this paul maybe one well, last you. thing is that what is your imagination at this moment right here right now how do you see this vision of yours how do you see the world in your eyes paul what mm. is that vision well, right now yeah it's really funny i actually see the world through so many different eyes so many times mm. but the one that comes up right now mm -hmm. uh, is is looking at it through the eyes of a three-year-old right um and you know i mean i <laughs> you can't really imagine what you know three -year -olds <laughs> are seeing but what you do know is that in nine years they're going to be 12 that's what you do know and in nine years, that's 2030. That's when, you know, these, these goals that, the, as in the, the, the global goals. And you, I mean, I, I can't imagine, I don't want to be around when the, the then 12 year old looks at you and says, hang on, you knew what was going to happen. What, what were you doing? You know, where, where was your where was your head you know and, and where were the actions and all those sorts of things and and again you you can't lock into those things if the only thing going on for you is you, is you. right the we, again we we need to remember that we're all at our best when when we're giving and and that's probably you know there are many great thinkers uh, out there, and I, I'm probably not one of them. But but that's probably why we're here to mm. connect. We're certainly not here to live in isolation. We're not here to just think about ourselves. We're we're here for other reasons. And this pandemic, I think, is is kind of like a, a wake up. Hang on a second, guys. You know, wake up. And I, I and I don't think it's it's about you know, some people talk about, oh, well, when we get back to normal. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 and there are now, you know, lovely things going on, like Symphony 7, like the great things you're doing, that now give people a place to go to find that track and to keep on that track so that our world can seriously be uh, the place that we would all want it to be. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you for that, Paul, again. <laughs> Thank you. This is Thank an you. amazing, amazing message for everybody right now. Oh. Listening to, to, to us and, you know, even to me personally, it really pierced my heart every time you share their oh, message. Wow. And I truly can resonate with each word that you say. But, you know, um, it's all about me right now in this space time. And yes, it's all about values, you know, what we value as a collective and it's about time to act on that space and that frequency okay and yeah and, and, and it's time for us all to be grateful and yes and, to be grateful and even. So, 
that leads me into um, my uh, sort of final thing for today, and that is to let you know that I'm deeply grateful for this time. And, and, yes. uh, and, and, and thank you very much for making it possible. <laughs> thank you, Paul. I'd love to talk to you more, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but yeah, our time is uh, almost up. But you know, you have a, you are really the Mac Jagger. <laughs> TEDx. Really <laughs> I, just, I just got to work on the mood. Right? <laughs> What's your okay, secret? Christine, thank uh, you so much. Wow, you're very healthy <laughs> and you're, you know, very, very vibrant energy. I love it. I love oh, it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then <laughs> equally, you, you've, you've created a, a great space for us to be. So thank you so much for that. Make thank your day you. a great one, too. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep on whatever you're doing. You're, You've got to share your secrets. <laughs> I will. Thank you so much. Bye, Brian. All right. Thank bye. you, Paul. And bye have bye. a great day. Bye. I will do exactly that. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.